It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Hello, everybody. Yes, it's the Gay Family Series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, brought to you by the Jell-O family of desserts. J-E-L-L-O, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O pudding. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tap. The yolk pudding just so And now, Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers this morning, they're just ready to have breakfast. Good morning, George. Mm-hmm. Hey, what are you so gay about? Because we're going to the Starlight Roof with the Rickies tonight. I've always wanted to go there. Uh-oh. Was that tonight? Yes, and I'm going to wear my brand new dress and a pair of... What do you mean, uh-oh, was that tonight? Well, we can't go, Liz Mr. Atterbury's coming over with Mr. Forsythe Oh, George, can't you put them off? Tell them you broke your leg or something Oh, sure, they wouldn't suspect anything when I walked into the bank in the morning Well, after we come home from the starlight roof, we can break your leg (laughs) I'm sorry, honey, Mr. Forsythe is too important He was just elected to the board of directors You'll just have to call the Rickies and tell them we can't make it No Liz? Baby, won't you think of me Look. once in... <laughs> Pouting won't get you any place. So just slide that lower lip back about a foot. <laughs> Baby, won't you think of me once in a while? Now, why don't you think of me once in a while? You know, all business isn't done in offices, Liz. There are more important things for women to do than taking care of the house and cooking and looking after children. There are? (laughs) Well, I should say so. Hey, wait a minute. You have a maid to take care of the house, you don't know how to cook, and we don't have any children. Hey, what do you do all day, anyway? What do I do all day? Well, I like that. I spend hours... I spend the whole afternoon... Most of my time is taken up by... I'm going to call the Rickies. That's better. And see how nice you can be to Mr. Forsythe this evening. Oh, is he bringing his horsey wife and that jerky son of his along? His wife's out of town. I don't know about his jerky son. Now, stop that, Liz. You'll get me in trouble. Well, he's sure to bring along some of those stale stories of his. Yeah, and that's another thing. He fancies himself quite a storyteller, so laugh it up. I'll laugh at everything but that story about the dog and cat. You know, the cat can't sing a note, the dog's a ventriloquist. Well, Liz, he always tells that one. You you have to give him some reaction. I'll give him a reaction, all right, but it might not be the one you expect. (laughs) I'd better test you. Now, let's pretend I'm Mr. Forsythe. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> Have you heard the one about the dog who played the guitar and the cat who sang Listen to the Mockingbird? Yes. Liz. <laughs> A thousand times. Liz. It wasn't funny in the first place. Now stop. You tell it lousy. Now that's enough. Where's your horsey wife and your jerky son? Now cut it out, Liz! <laughs> I want to hear you laugh tonight Well, then you better sit close and tickle me Ah, good dinner, Liz, girl Oh, yes, yes, indeed It's a wonderful dinner, Mrs. Cooper Certainly was wonderful Well, thank you, Mr. Forsythe Yeah, well, say, I just happened to think of a very funny story yeah, well, here we go. Oh, this one is a, is a Jim Dandy. It's a real pipperoo. <laughs> Say, have you heard the one about... No, I haven't No, heard how does it go? But, uh... Well, no, really, we haven't heard it. Go ahead. Ah, uh, but I haven't told you what it's about yet. It doesn't matter. They haven't heard it. <laughs> they might have. Uh... Want to bet? <laughs> is it about the dog who played the guitar and the cat who sang... Oh, uh, yes. They haven't heard it. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it seems there was this uh, dog. 
dog, you see, and he he played the guitar while while a little cat sang. Um, uh, Listen to the Mockingbird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're uh, sure you haven't heard this one? No, no, and I'm dying to see how it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't stand it. <laughs> Well, his booking agency took him down to a theater manager, and he was amazed, and he said, that's amazing. Now, here's where it gets really good. <laughs> and the agent, the agent said, look, before you hire them, I think there's something you ought to know. <coughs> there's something in my throat. Have a glass of water, please. Miss Cooper? Liz! Huh? Oh, that's very funny. <laughs> and know the dog's a ventriloquist. <laughs> it's a funny idea, isn't it, George? <laughs> Liz. <laughs> Mr. Forsythe didn't finish the story. He asked for a glass of water. Ooh. <laughs> You've ruined his story. Oh, was that really the answer? It was just a wild guess. <laughs> no, that wasn't the answer. It wasn't? What? No, no. You see, the theater owner wanted to hire just a cat. But the agent said he can't work alone. Here's the twist. <laughs> the dog makes all his arrangements. Oh, <laughs> oh that yes. Yeah. Oh, that's rich. Uh, tell me, Mr. Forsythe, how's your family? Your cute little wife and your uh, adorable son. Oh, they're fine, Mrs. Cooper, although my son... <laughs> Wally is really having a very trying time right now. So. Oh, what's wrong with the boy? Uh, his first big formal dance is next week, you see, and it seems everybody in his crowd knows how to samba, but poor old Wally. Oh, oh, for goodness sakes. Children worry about the silliest things, don't they? Doing the samba is so easy. You know how to do the samba? Oh, Liz is a wonderful samba dancer. Oh, oh yes, I love to samba. <laughs> well, uh... Mrs. Cooper would have been asking too much for you to teach Wally how to samba in time for the dance. Well, I... Uh... Oh, she'd love to. She'll do it. Now, now, wait. <laughs> let's, let's keep sanity. Now, let's let's, let's... let's let Mrs. Cooper decide. After all, she's the one who has to do the teaching. Well, Liz? Well, Liz? Gladly, she said, with the cold muzzle of a revolver at each temple. <laughs> Excellent. I'll send him over the very first thing in the morning. Good. Mrs. Cooper, what are you doing dancing around the living room? Oh, haven't you heard, Katie? I'm opening up a dance studio. Huh? Yes, all you need is six lessons with Liz Lazanga. My slogan is learn to samba with a red-hot number. Now, what are you talking about? I'm giving a samba lesson this morning to the son of the new board member at the bank. Oh, really? What's the boy like? Well, all I know is he's painfully shy. Never takes his eyes off the ground. No. Yeah, the first time I saw him, I thought he was looking for cigarette butts. <laughs> oh, that must be Wally. I'll get it. Well, good luck, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, hello. How are you, Wally? You remember me. I'm Liz Cooper. Uh, won't you come in? <laughs> well, let's go in the living room, shall we? <laughs> won't you sit down? Picked up any good cigarette butts lately? <laughs> Wally, say something. I think I'm going to faint. <laughs> now, Wally, your father said you wanted to learn to samba. Uh, samba. We might as well begin. Uh, suppose you watch me now. Now, this is the basic step. There, now, watch my hips, see? Do you think you can do that? Well, why don't you say something? I'm watching your hips. <laughs> Wally, look, the step is very simple. And this time, look at my feet. Da 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 Wally, you're still watching my hips. I like them. They're different. <laughs> different from what? My hips. <laughs> look, Wally, you saw how it goes. Why don't you see if you can do it? Well, 
I'll try. Good. Now you try it alone first. Da 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 da. Fine, fine. Only take smaller steps. Don't don't leap around so much. You'll be dancing with a girl, not an antelope. <laughs> Gee, this is kind of fun. Well, it's really an easy step to do. Uh, I think maybe you've got it now. Suppose we try it together. I said, suppose we dance together. You mean just the two of us? <laughs> Yes, that's the usual number. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, I can't dance with you. You're a woman. <laughs> I know, my husband likes me this way. <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Look, Wally, some people are men and some are women. They're made that way so they can dance together. Oh! <laughs> Very simple, Wally. Now let's try it. Okay. Da, 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 da. Hey, this is all right. Oh, I think I'm catching on. Da, 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 da. Oh, 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 gee, Mrs. Oh, Cooper. Oh, oh, I'm sorry I stepped on your foot. You don't think it's broken, do you? Uh, oh, no. My shoe always bends under like this. <laughs> well, if it isn't broken, we might as well go on dancing, huh? I'm beginning to like it. Me too, Wally. I haven't had so much fun since I stepped on a rusty nail. On with the dance. <laughs> Hey, Liz! I'm here in the bedroom, George. How'd the lesson go, dear? Just peachy. Hey, what are you doing? Soaking these red blobs that used to be my feet. <laughs> my legs look like a couple of thermometers. Mm. Then Wally isn't exactly Arthur Murray. George... Wally dances the samba like a kangaroo with hot coals in its pouch. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry the kid gave you such a rough time, honey, but it was worth it. Mr. Forsythe came to my office this afternoon, gave me a cigar, and sat and talked for half an hour. He never done that before. Well, I'm glad my arches didn't fall in vain. Oh, he said Wally had a wonderful time and was absolutely thrilled, uh, you know, at learning to samba. Well, it's nice to know the dancing bear enjoyed himself. Oh, he did. In fact, the dancing bear is coming over for another lesson tomorrow. Oh, no. George, I can't do it. My feet are only human, you know. But, Liz, it may mean a promotion. I'll say you'll do it. For me, huh? Well, all right, George. But believe me, these little piggies will never go to market again. Well, if Liz would only show me how to dance the samba, in return I'd show her how to make a swell dessert for George. A Washington's birthday special. You make it with creamy, rich jello vanilla tapioca pudding or refreshing orange coconut tapioca. Just prepare the jello tapioca pudding as directed. Then garnish each delicious serving with whipped cream, gay red maraschino cherries, and tangy green mint leaves. It's so pretty and so easy to fix, because all three jello tapioca puddings are ready prepared. All you do is add milk, and they take about five minutes to cook in an ordinary saucepan. Nothing to go wrong. And all three are so rich and distinctive and creamy good. Jello vanilla, chocolate, and orange coconut tapioca. Enjoy them all. Find out why more women buy Jell-O puddings than any other prepared puddings in the world. That name Jell-O is a registered trademark of General Foods. J-E-L-L-O And now back to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband. <laughs> As we return to the Coopers, we find Liz in the unaccustomed role of dancing teacher. Right now, she's giving Wally Forsythe his second samba lesson. They're dancing not cheek to cheek, but shin to shin. Oh, well, Wally, that was fine. You've improved a lot. Gee, do you really think so, Mrs. Cooper? I certainly do. We've been dancing for five minutes. You've only stepped on my feet six times. <laughs> it was real shrewd of you to wear Mr. Cooper's old football shoes. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, you don't get to my toes for three inches. <laughs> well, shall we try it once more? Uh, Mrs. Cooper, before we try dancing again, I'd like to <laughs> ask your advice about something. Oh, all right, Wally. Uh, maybe we'd better sit down. Well, shall we sit here on the couch? Well... Oh, it's all right, Wally. I'll sit at one end and you can sit at the other. Well... We could put a pillow between us to make it proper. Well... I'll tell you what, I'll go upstairs and you call me on the downstairs phone. <laughs> oh, no, no, it's all right, Mrs. Cooper. We'll sit on the couch. All right, now, Wally. What do you want advice about? Oh, I know it sounds awful silly, but... <laughs> I'm in love. You are, Wally? Yeah. With a girl. <laughs> well, you couldn't have made a better choice. <laughs> you see, she doesn't know it yet, Mrs. Cooper, and I wanted to ask you, should I tell her or keep it to myself? Of course you should tell her, Wally. But, gee, you don't know how bashful I am, Mrs. Cooper. Even in school, when I want to leave the room... I don't hold up my hand. I climb out the window. Uh-huh. Well, uh, Wally, it shouldn't be too difficult. Just take her by the hand and say, I love you. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Cooper? Yes? Uh, give me your hand. What? Mrs. Cooper, I love you. Wally, there must be some mistake. No mistake. I love you, Mrs. Cooper. Or, as I call you in my diary, dreamboat. <laughs> you wrote that in your diary? Yes, Mrs. Cooper. When I got home last night, I crossed out nothing much happened today, and I wrote in, Wow! <laughs> Wally, you mustn't say things like that. After all... Oh, I know you're older than I am and you're married, but, well, I just can't help the way I feel. Frankly, Mrs. Cooper, I think you're just real gone. Well, anyway, my feet are. Gee, I hope you aren't mad at what I said, but honestly, you're the swellest person I've ever known. You're the only person who's ever been nice to me. Oh, now, Wally, surely somebody else is nice to you. What about your father? He acts like he doesn't even know me. What makes you say that? He always refers to me as, what's his name? <laughs> oh. Wally, I'm very flattered that you think you're in love with me, but you must remember I'm married to George. Gee, I forgot all about Mr. Cooper. Oh, you wouldn't mind leaving him, would you? I wouldn't mind. I thought not. Well, he's so old. Old? He must be way over 30. Why, uh, yes. Yes, that's right, Wally. George is old and, and kind of broken down, and he needs me. Needs you? Yes, he, he needs me to keep fresh batteries in his hearing aid. <laughs> And I'm the one he calls when his mush is too hot. He's too weak to blow it himself. I should have known you'd be like this, loyal to the end. But if this is farewell, then could I... Could I kiss you goodbye? Well, I... Just one little kiss on the hand? All right, Wally. What are we waiting for? Where can I park my gum? <laughs> Don't bother parking it. We aren't going to be stopped that long. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, you see, my kiss makes you cry out with passion, doesn't it? No, your braces scratched me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it, Mr. Atterbury? <laughs> Tell us more, Liz. What did Wally do then? Well, then he took me by the hand and said, Mrs. Cooper, I love you. Why, that little <laughs> devil. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Imagine Wally being in love with you, Liz. <laughs> Isn't that a scream? <laughs> <laughs> 
Ha, ha. <laughs> oh, now, Liz, you, you'll have to admit it's pretty hilarious. Well, I'll admit I'm old enough to be his, his sister. <laughs> but I don't see why his being in love with me is so funny. You fell in love with me once, you know. Well, Liz, honey, I don't see why you're getting uh, sore. Now, no, no, look, you two, it's all over, and Liz did a wonderful job. George, we're in solid with foresight, thanks to her. Oh, it wasn't so much. Oh, yes, it was. And to show my appreciation, I'm going to take you out on the town tonight, anywhere you want to go. Oh, could we... could we possibly go to the Starlight Roof? Why not? Oh, wonderful! I have come back! I have to see you again, Mrs. Cooper. Wally, what are you doing here? Mr. Cooper, your wife and I love each other. Madly. And I want you to give her up. After all, you're old. Your hair is streaked with gray. Your face is all lined and saggy. And your stomach is... I'm Mr. Atterbury! (laughs) That's Mr. Cooper. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Cooper, your wife and I love each other. Don't we, Dreamboat? Wally. What, Dreamboat? Go away. No, no, stay here. Speak up. Blow your whistle, Dreamboat. George, (laughs) Mr. Atterbury, please. I've decided to take you away, Mrs. Cooper. I can't leave you here, a nursemaid to an empty shell of an old man. (laughs) What? Wally. Sometimes it's merciful to be cruel. Uh, Tell your husband what you said about him today. (laughs) Liz, what did you say about me? Well, I, uh... uh... Go ahead, don't be afraid. Tell him, Dreamboat. Wally Forsythe, don't call me Dreamboat. Anything you say, darling. And don't call me darling. Okay, I won't, dear. And don't call me dear. Try mother. Cooper, why don't you step out and let your wife find the happiness she deserves? After all, you're an older man. You're more like her father. The boy's right. Why don't you give her up, Dad? <laughs> Liz, what did you tell this kid about me? Well, it's all very simple, George. I explained to Wally about your age and how you need me. Uh, Understand, George? I I explained how you're getting on in years, and now, more than ever, you need me. It isn't fair to hold her. You can get somebody else to blow your mush. (laughs) Oh. Oh, yes. Uh, Oh, she's right, Wally. I need her now more than ever. If, if Liz left, there'd be nobody here to knit my shawls. And, and when my rheumatism twists me in knots, who, who'd untie me? See, Wally, he needs me. I can't leave him. But Dreamboat, the mother. I mean, Mrs. Cooper. Well, what about me? You'll just have to forget, Wally. Very well. I'll go away. I'm going where there aren't any women. You're going to join the Foreign Legion? No, I'm going to join the YMCA. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper... As long as this is goodbye, may I kiss your hand? Of course, Wally. Oh, oh. darn those braces. <laughs> Farewell. <laughs> oh, wasn't he sweet? George, why don't you ever kiss my hand? Well, I would, kiddo, but I'm too old to bend over. (laughs) Never mind. Well, now that Liz's grimy amours are out of the way, shall we go to the Starlight Room? Oh, yes, let's. i better get dressed. Oh, George, we're finally going to the Starlight Room. I'll get it. Hello? Oh, hello. How are you, sir? Tonight. Well, uh, I, uh... Oh, yes. Uh, Yes, it'll be all right. I'll tell her. Uh, Goodbye. Who was that, George? Mr. Forsythe. He's on his way over here. What on earth for? Well, you did such a good job with Wally. Now, he wants to learn the samba. Oh, no!
Yes, Lucille, what gives? Tonight, Robert, I'm going to read your mind. I will be a swami. A swami is a man. Oh, I will be a swamess. Swamini? <laughs> uh, I will be an oriental mind reader. A little mental music, Wilbur. Good afternoon. Are you the mind reader? Uh, yes, please. I am a Japanese mind reader. Well, can you read my mind? Oh, uh, so sorrow, so sorrow. Cannot read English. Can you think in uh, Japanese? <laughs> oh, now, now, come on, come on. Take a, take a crack at it. Uh, okay. Open your head, please. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Ah, uh, ha, ha, I see uh, plenty travel ahead. With me? Uh, no, uh, with this accent. <laughs> Uh, uh, for you, I see, uh, ha, 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 you have date with uh, a beautiful girl. That's tonight. Oh, uh, she's taking you to her home. Uh, she's saying, uh, uh, what do you want? Uh, oh, ho, ho, you saying, I want uh, jello tapioca pudding. <laughs> well, gee, I hope it's jello vanilla tapioca. Delicious, light, and tempting. Uh, wait a minute, please. If a Japanese boy had offer like that, he would never say a jello a vanilla a tapioca. He wouldn't? Uh, no, uh, no, thank you, no, thank you, no, thank you. <laughs> would say that? Well, what would he say? A uh, yellow, a uh, chocolate, a uh, tapioca. Uh, so rich, the kids say it's candy good. Well, you see, that's the difference between the... That's what? the difference between the Orient and the Occident. Uh, yes, I am from Orient, but this accent is from Occident. <laughs> uh, oh, now, please, please, I see you take lady in arms, you uh, whispering uh, soft, uh, sweet things in ear. <laughs> Really? <laughs> uh, see, uh, yes, yes. Am I saying Jello orange coconut tapioca, a refreshing blend of orange and tropical coconut? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, and and then you saying, uh, oh, I cannot repeat. No. Well, go ahead. What do I say? Uh, you say, oh no, I can't say. A <laughs> uh, Jello uh, tapioca puddings are easy. They take only about five minutes to preparing. I said that. Oh, you devil, you. <laughs> Good night. Richard, never mind snoring. Richard, Richard Denning. <coughs> what, Liz? I'm not Liz, I'm Lucille Ball. Uh... I'm a little confused. We're not off the air, are we? No, but we have an important announcement to make. Guess who's going to broadcast on Sundays? Jack Benny? No, it's a couple. Two people who are very devoted to each other, and one of them thinks the other is just wonderful. Oh, of course, Amos and Andy. No, no. Starting March 5th, my favorite husband is moving to Sunday. Really? Uh-huh. And I'm awfully glad it's changing time, because I always have a radio program on Friday night, and now that it's changing to Sunday, I'll get to hear it. That doesn't sound right, does it? <laughs> What time are we going to be on? Six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Hmm. How about the other parts of the country? They'll hear it at S-Y-L-N. What's S-Y-L-N? See your local newspaper. <laughs> oh, gee, that'll be wonderful. Well, kiss me goodnight, honey. Hey, what's that for? You're still Richard Denning, remember? Oh. Good night, Lucille. <laughs> Good night, Dick. <laughs> You have been listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning and based on characters created by Isabel Scott Rorick. Tonight's program was produced and directed by Jess Oppenheimer, who wrote the script with Madeline Pugh and Bob Carroll, Jr. Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband again next week, presented by... J-E-L-L-O Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family Jello, yum yum yum. Jello puddings, yum yum yum. Jello tap, the yolka pudding just so Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.